For God so loved the world. So the Father, the picture is that the Father loved the, the world so much. And the word for world is not just man, by the way. Have you ever studied that? The word for world is cosmos. God loved the world. God loved the galaxies. He came to restore much more than fallen man. What happens to the environment around you when you suffer? <laughs> so when God restores, so does the environment around you. He came to save the cosmos. He came to restore everything around you, the planet, the cosmos, the heavenlies. He came to restore anything in the heavenlies that was tainted by the enemy being the prince of the power of the air. For God so loved the world. That's his motive that he gave. Wow, that's the generosity. What does generosity look like? Generosity of the Father looks like giving. And what does giving look like? I'm going to send my tangible son. So when God sends you as a messenger, when God sends the Christ inside of you to someone, he is being generous through you to go minister, to go bless someone, to go encourage them, to go lift them up. God so loved the world that he gave. His motive for giving his son was love. Wow. He wants no one to perish, but that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, right? When does eternal life begin, by the way? Doesn't begin when you die? Hope not. Am I challenging someone today? So eternal life begins when you say yes to Jesus. No, actually it begins when you come into this world because you will live forever someplace. That's actually good to know. <laughs> we should probably live forever with the Lord. We will forever be with the Lord, your Bible says. Thank you, Lord. That's a long time, forever, with the Lord. And that presence of God can start now. John 3.16, we'll start at verse 1, and we'll see how far we get. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, hmm, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. So he was a Jewish leader. His name was Nicodemus. He came to Jesus at night. Okay, that's worth knowing. Not during the day. He came to Jesus at night. I'm pretty sure that's where Nick at night got started. I don't know why those things come to my mind. That's Nick at night. And he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. Wow, he's a Pharisee of Pharisees. He's a Jewish teacher, and he recognizes God being with Jesus because he sees Jesus releasing power from on high. And he recognizes that. Verse 3, Jesus replied, Verily, or Very truly, I tell you that no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. That word born means regenerated or begotten. He's regenerated. He's begotten. Again, actually means from above. He's regenerated or begotten from above. Some of the translations say from a high place. He's regenerated. He's renewed. He's begotten or born from above. No one can see or enter the kingdom. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nick at night asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. He's thinking natural, and Jesus is trying to help him to be born of things above. You've got to understand things above, not just earthly things. And he's trying to go there with him and bring Nicodemus, who's an amazing, brilliant man. Brilliant. You don't become a council of Jewish teaching without being brilliant. 
This is not a guy who's just sort of, you know, ignorant. But the Lord's trying to unlock the spirit man in him. Not just IQ, but EQ or SQ. I want his spirit to come alive. I don't want his soul to lead. His mind, will, and emotions are brilliant. I made him that way, but I want his spirit to lead. And unless his spirit leads, he won't understand a word I'm saying. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are begotten from above. Verse 5, Verily I tell you that no one can enter the kingdom unless they are born again. So, And then he says in verse 7 to Nicodemus, You should not be surprised at my saying that you must be born again. For the wind, or the translation is spirit, blows... Wherever it pleases, the spirit blows. The word blows actually there means inspires. So it says it this way. Instead of the wind blows, it's the spirit inspire wherever it pleases. And the word pleases is intense. It's it's intentional. The Holy Spirit's intentional. So you would read that verse like this. The spirit inspires wherever it intends. We need inspiration from above. You hear the sound. The word hear means hearken with respect. Come on, somebody. You hear the sound of the Spirit. You hearken with respect. The word sounds means tones that bring light to your thoughts. You hear, you hearken with respect to the tones that God is sending that bring light to your thoughts. But you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus asked that famous, honest question, a brilliant man, honestly, before the King Jesus says this, how can this be? That's a man that's struggling because he was taught by flesh. And Jesus is introducing him to the things of the Spirit, to a higher realm. He's helping him try to become um, born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus, you can already tell, he's opening up. Something's going on in his being because prior to this point, he's been an intellectual. And now he's amazed by signs and wonders. That's why he came to the Lord. Remember, I know you're from God because no one can do these things except by the Spirit of God. John 3.16 is a conversation that Jesus is having with a Pharisee. That's crazy that he would spend, if you will, potentially waste this truth on a man who is a Pharisee. This is the apex of your Christianity. You would think that this would be in the Sermon on the Mount. At least people would get this. Oh, that's right. You bet for God's soul of the world. He's spending this verse on a Pharisee. A man who potentially may not get it. He's been born or begotten of the flesh and not the spirit. This is a conversation with a teacher of the mind. And yet Jesus goes after him and says some heavy things. Let's read. For God so loved the world. And you hear him saying that? Nick, I'm trying to bring you in to heavenly things. And let's start with this powerful truth. For God so loved the cosmos that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, for God did not send His Son. He's talking about Himself to a Pharisee. God did not send His Son in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Wow. Remember, He came to save much more than fallen man. Verse 18, whoever believes, and that word there for believes is trusting the Lord with your life. Trusting the Lord with your life. Whoever believes, whoever trusts God, Nick, I want to bring you to the apex. I'll go find Peter. I'll go find Paul, the other 
different personalities. I'll go take it to the darkest of the darkest. But Nicodemus, I want to come after you. You're a leader in the church. How is it that you don't know these things? 